Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is Saturday, September the 14th. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first, some brief comments on Devin Haley, uh, Haney's <clears throat> big win over Abdulayev. Haney delivered. Understand, though, he was an overwhelming favorite. In this fight, he showed you why. Now, he wants Lomachenko. In this fight, he got the Lomachenko ending. His opponent's corner, midway through the fight, had seen enough. Haney had smashed up Aduleyev's face. Aduleyev was not able to really set up a consistent pocket. Understand. Abdulayev is excellent, excellent in the pocket. But he couldn't take advantage of it because Haney is just too fast-footed. Haney was just too fast-handed. Right When you're dealing with a guy who moves as well as Devin Haney does, right, you find yourself just trying to pin him down. And when you do, Aduleyev does get Haney up on the ropes. You only have a few seconds to do something. Right? I thought Haney looked tremendous. Um, looking at the fight, I would still take Loma over him right now. Right? But understand what Haney does just instinctively at 20 years old. Right? He has an understanding of the sport that's far beyond a lot of older fighters. Haney already has a three-dimensional element to his game. So you'll notice when he comes in on Aduleyev, you'll notice that Haney can come in low. Right? He, he can fight high. His last fight ends with him standing tall and landing a straight right hand. He can fight low like in this fight right when it comes to movement he can move right or he can move left right he understands that if he masters the angles keeps you guessing at whether he's high or low right uses his jab to set up his other punches keeps you guessing on whether he's coming forward or backwards, going right or left. If he is two-handed and keeps you guessing on which hand he's going to use, and if he sets up his construct so he doesn't telegraph anything, then this is a guy who's going to run roughshod through the 135-pound weight class. <clears throat> Understand, if he fights Gervonta Davis, Davis is a slugger. Davis famously has had some, we'll call it, preparation issues. Where he's had some problems making weight and stuff like that. A guy like Devin Haney would bring that out in a fight. Because Gervonta Davis would have to move his feet and would have to try to track down Devin Haney. Right? In my opinion, that fight would look like, and I use this fight as a reference point, because it's an iconic fight. Ali against Liston, the first fight. Right? Where Davis would look like he's carrying luggage, walking through an airport. Right? We all know Davis is a very hard hitter with both hands. Right? And Davis has beaten athletic stylist in the past. He beat Pedraza. Right? But Devin Haney is a guy who has ring coverage. He can hit you with the jab from outside and he can move. And I'm just telling you, guys who can move like this create optical illusions. If you go back and look at that Ali Liston fight, it's clear Ali wins the first round of the fight. But if you go back and if you look at the first round and count the punches, I'm not sure if Ali throws any. 
right? Well, Devin Haney has that kind of ring presence. Where I think he would come up short right now against Lomachenko is there are times in this fight where Devin Haney can just step back. Abdulayev can't reach him. Loma, when Haney steps back, would step forward with him. Loma's also three-dimensional, right? Loma has added wrinkles. He can fight fast, left-handed or right-handed, right? I think Loma is better in the deep pocket than Devin Haney. I think here, Devin Haney was able to land his jab and set everything up off of the jab, right? Very hard to land a jab on Lomachenko. Let's just say that that is a match made in heaven if it comes off, right? I think it would be probably the biggest test either man has had as a professional. Let's shift gears. Uh, let me say too, Haney got the Loma ending. Um, his opponent's corner said, that's it, enough. <laughs> right? You know a guy's a badass. When the other side reaches the conclusion midway through the fight that their fighter has no chance of coming back in the fight. Let me also applaud the stoppage. Right? You have a young fighter, his opponent was 25 here, who actually does have championship level skills in the pocket. Corners need to be aware of that fighter's future. You don't want the guy to leave a fight too discouraged. He's already been discouraged for four or five rounds. Right? So there's a mental aspect, but there's also a physical aspect. The guy's nose got banged up. His face started falling apart. Um, you don't want a fighter to suffer permanent injuries or disfiguring injuries. You know, have his nose flattened and stuff like that in a fight that he has very little chance of coming back in. Right? Understand, too, the visual would have gotten worse because... Haney early is relying on a jab, right? That jab opened the door for Haney's straight right hand, right? Against movers like this, it's later in fights that they start throwing the power shots, right? They've already discouraged you and secured a lead on the judges' scorecards with movement and a jab and charisma. Right? It's later in the fight that Devin Haney was going to start really inflicting big punishment. I applaud the stoppage here. Now, here online, just philosophically, <clears throat> you know, I view our competition as uh, the casino. Not anyone else doing YouTube videos here. I feel grateful for the boxing community here online. I watch other videos because I'm trying to figure out the fighters so I can get an edge on the casino. So there's an excellent video. It's one of the best videos here online from Seconds Out, right? They're a YouTube provider you need to know about. I watch their videos often. And their representative, the interviewer, catches up with a sparring partner of Daniel Dubois, who I consider to be the future, not the immediate future, but the future nonetheless, of the heavyweight division. So they're talking with this guy. Understand, boxing has a whole group of people who you don't know about. Young fighters on the way up. Sometimes they're unbeaten. Right, who spar with a lot of the fighters you know, right? Who are learning the trade, who are apprenticing by going from camp to camp, helping guys prepare for fights, helping guys stay sharp between fights. So they caught up with a sparring partner of Daniel Dubois, an American guy who was so highly thought of that they brought him in from across the Atlantic to the United Kingdom. So he's talking about Dubois, and it was fascinating what he said. He said that Dubois has the basics down, 
right? You know, Dubois obviously, you know, knows how to stand, has some defensive skills and stuff like that. But, and he mentioned that Dubois is a power puncher, right? I'm sure the guy could feel Dubois' punches as a sparring partner. But then, in very diplomatic language, and you know how these interviews go. This isn't an interview in a studio. Someone recognized this guy out and about, and they stick a mic in his face and a YouTube camera, right? Or a phone camera, and they're taping him while he's on the go. Right? This is kind of like, um, you know, gonzo journalism. So in very diplomatic language, the guy diplomatically says that, you know, Dubois doesn't have the fastest hands. So I thought, wow, that's interesting. So then the interviewer who was on his A-game then says, who's the best fighter you sparred with? Because it comes out, of course, that the guy had sparred with Tyson Fury. Right? So the guy's diplomatic. He says the most surprising person he sparred with. That's the word he uses. Surprising person he sparred with. Is Deontay Wilder. Right? I'll try to put the link. I'll try to refine this video. I was out at a, rest, a breakfast place looking at my phone watching this video. If I find the link again to this video, I'll put it in the comment section or in the description section of this video. But he says the most surprising person he sparred with was Deontay Wilder. And he said the reason why is because Wilder spars in a style that's different than how Wilder fights. Now keep in mind, this guy, the sparring partner, was one of these cute, flashy type guys, speed guy. Right? The sparring partner guy is a speed guy. He claimed that when he was sparring Wilder, Wilder had a lot of head movement. <laughs> that Wilder was throwing a lot of jabs. Right? We don't see that in Wilder fights. The sparring partner talked about how shocked he was being in the ring with Wilder because he hadn't seen that in Wilder fights. Right? Just know years ago, I was watching a fight. One of the best fights in the history of boxing, as I see it. Thomas the Hitman Hearns against Ray Leonard. And understand, in that fight, Ray hurts Hearns. Right? Hearns is a guy who would go on to destroy Roberto Duran. Right? Ray hurts Hearns. And then Thomas Hearns starts dancing around the ring. Folks, if you were alive in the early 80s, that was a jaw dropper. Nobody knew Thomas the Hitman Hearns had a back foot game. Now back then, we didn't have all the access to amateur films. If you followed Hearns as an amateur, old timers tell me you would have known he had a back foot game. But as a pro, you just remembered Hearns running roughshod through Pimpino Cuevas. Right? Hearns earning the Hitman nickname. Right? Well, Thomas the Hitman Hearns was on his toes. Over a series of several rounds, he outboxes Ray Leonard. Outboxes him. Right? Well, to make a long story short, Ray gets the stoppage late. I believe that's in the 13th or 14th rounds. But the story of that fight was the fact that Thomas the Hitman Hearns could get up on his toes and outbox you. Let me point out too that Hearns' ability to outbox Leonard actually continued into the rematch several years later. Well, Deontay Wilder has a secret, folks. The secret is that Deontay Wilder in private is practicing his back foot game, one in which he has far more vo volume, throws far more jabs, and uses a lot more head movement than he does in pro fights where he's alpha looking to land a long straight right hand. Well the interview got even more interesting because the seconds out sparring partner guy then starts talking about his sparring sessions with Tyson Fury and 
he was impressed by Fury's skill level, by Fury's movement, by Fury's hand speed. Right. Keep in mind, this is a guy, a, the sparring partner is known for his hand speed. He's in the ring with Tyson Fury and he acknowledges Fury's technical brilliance. He speaks of Fury in terms of his technical excellence in a way in which he doesn't speak of Daniel Dubois. In other words, he says, hey, Dubois has, you know, a good foundation, basically. Right? He's, you know, he's sound. But that's different than saying, hey, you know, Fury, to see a big man move like that, basically. <laughs> and to have, you know, to have that many skills. You could tell it surprised him. Right? So, just to understand that Fury is sharp. Fury is highly skilled. He's probably the most skilled, in fact, I know he is, the most skilled heavyweight out there, just in terms of skills, right? Alexander Usyk will give him a run for the money, sure. But let's just say, in terms of skills, it's Tyson Fury, I would say then Alexander Usyk, you know, you can pick who's who, right? Just understand that as big a puncher as Deontay Wilder is, in private, he's working on the rest of his game. There might be a Thomas Hearn situation in his future where he gets hurt in the ring. Hearns got hit in the rib cage, was deflated by Leonard, who people don't realize KO'd about 60% of his opponents. Right? Then as Leonard went hunting, Hitman went boxing. Right? Understand. Deontay Wilder, there's more to him than meets the eye in fights like the Bermain Stavern rematch and the Dominique Brazil first round KO. Right? And just understand, Daniel Dubois, young guy, doesn't have Fury's hand speed. I don't think he's completely ready for Fury right now. But just understand, Dubois is savvy enough to be preparing himself by picking guys who are sparring or have sparred with Fury and Wilder. Right? Fascinating video. I hope it gets a lot of views. It's seconds out. Right? It's them encountering a sparring partner out on the street someplace of Dubois, Fury, and Wilder. I hope you give it a look. Let me know what you think. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Understand, if Daniel Dubois faces Tyson Fury, what this sparring partner is telling you is that there's going to be a hand speed gap. Right? There's going to be a hand speed gap. Let me also tell you, too, that what I'm reading into this interview is that if Fury fights Wilder, and if Fury hurts Wilder. You might actually have two guys up on their toes dancing around the ring at that point. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.